There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath their flood, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, lose all. Guilty sins and sinners plunge beneath their flood, lose all their guilty sins. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day, and there have I. As vile as he washed all my sins away, washed all my sins away, washed all my sins away, and there have I as vile as he washed all my sins away. Dear dying lamb, your precious blood shall never lose its power, till all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no Saved to sin no more, be saved to sin no more. Till all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more. Ere since by faith I saw. Your flowing wounds supply, redeeming love has washed my clean, and shall be till I die, and shall be till I die, and shall be till. shall be my theme, and shall be till I die. Amen. Good morning and welcome to St. Martin's Mission on this second Sunday of the Easter season. It's good to be here today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We had a good Bible study upstairs and I trust we'll have a Good Mass with the Lord being here with us today in St. Martin's Chapel. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. My brothers, my sisters, let us prepare ourselves by confessing our sins to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Most merciful Father, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have failed to do. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry, and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, and forgive me, and in your compassion, renew me with your spirit, so that cleansed of my sins and strengthened for your service, I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life, 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, source of all that is perfect and good, your nature and your gifts far exceed our capacity to comprehend. When our hearts are low and our spirits are left uncertain, come among us as you once came among your disciples, with mercy and forgiveness, with gentleness and compassion, and with undying love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Our first scripture reading from the Holy Bible for today's second Sunday of Easter is from Acts, the second chapter. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among each others according to their need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area, to breaking of bread in their homes, and they ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today's Mass is taken from portions of Psalm 118. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. I was hard-pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord. And he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord, this has been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our second reading is from the first letter of Peter. The first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith, to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, honor, and glory 
at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have seen him, have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet you believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. And he said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them and Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand out and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God is good, amen? Amen. Amen. What I'd like to do is read two verses from today's gospel reading as a text for this morning's homily. John, the 20th chapter, verses 24 and 25. Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much for this new day you've given us as a gift from your hands, O Lord. First of all, Lord, we come before you asking your forgiveness that we might be set free of our sins and our offenses, Lord. And Father, help us to be able to forgive one another and to forgive all people that have hurt us. For without forgiving them, we can't expect to be forgiven by you. Help our faith, O oh Lord, to grow. Help us not always be looking for proof here and there, but Believe what you tell us because you said it. And help us always rely on you for everything, Lord. In simplicity of faith because your word is truth. We pray, O oh Lord, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
His mercy and my unbelief. Today is the Sunday of the Divine Mercy. That's the day we celebrate the Divine Mercy. In fact, Father Michael out in Colorado, the name of his church is Divine Mercy Catholic Church. And I say today is Divine Mercy, and at least here in the chapel, nobody shouted Amen. Mm -hmm. Nobody's shouted Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Nobody's jumping up and down with shouts of joy. And out there, probably you're wondering what I'm talking about. Because we just don't know what divine mercy really means, maybe. Mm -hmm. Could that be the case? This is the Sunday of divine mercy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. And the rest of us said, so what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah. Even what Lily got that? an idea what today is about because she had to listen to me all week. Mm hmm you know, it seems we rely on the mercy of God for our salvation, don't we? And we say it so much. We rely on it so much. We hear it said so much. We really don't think about it anymore. I'm saved by God's grace and mercy. Hallelujah. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> We're forgiven now. Yeah. It seems we rely on His mercy for the forgiveness of of sin, but what is mercy? What is it? What is a simple definition of mercy? Well, I looked it up. Mercy means compassion showed to an offender. Mm -hmm. That's mercy. Yeah. Guy commits a crime. Yeah. He's let off the hook. That's mercy. He's forgiven. He's merc That's being merciful. Mercy is a blessing. Resulting from divine favor. Ah, now we're getting someplace. A blessing resulting from divine favor. Well, what is that blessing we receive by divine favor? The blessing is we don't have to carry our sins and our offenses mm -hmm. around with us anymore. The Lord has forgiven us. He sets us free. And He proclaims grace to us by saying... Believe, and you will be set free. That's mercy. Mercy is also love given to one who is unworthy or ill-deserving. Mm -hmm. How many of us deserve the love of God? Everybody. We yeah. should. Yeah. We don't deserve it. God gives it to us. Mm -hmm. It's undeserved. It's unmerited. We don't earn it. We didn't do a great bunch of great things and God says now I can finally love you Bill. You finally fulfilled the requirement. No. Boy if that was the case we'd never know God's love would we? You know there's a verse in scripture that kind of ties all this stuff together and it's Hebrews 4.16 Therefore let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy, there it is, and find grace to help in time of need. The divine mercy of Christ always draws us to Him, huh? Mm -hmm. It never pushes us away from Him. By His mercy, we're always drawn. Why? Why is that? So we can find His grace. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? It's God's mercy that draws us to Him so we can find His grace. Grace to be forgiven. Grace to be set free. Grace to be born again. Grace to have a fresh start day after day after day. That's what Solomon meant when he said God's mercies are new every morning. Mm -hmm. Did you mess up yesterday? Did I mess up yesterday? The answer would be yes. Huh? I say, say, yes, you did. Yes, I did. <laughs> Thank you, Bill, for reminding me of that fact. Yes, I did. I messed up just this morning upstairs in Bible study, didn't I? When I spouted something off, I shouldn't have said. Yeah, but God's mercies are new. Not even every morning, moment by moment. huh? That's what we need. That's grace, giving mercy. And he sets us free. Free from what? Sin that ruins our life. Mm -hmm. Not only now, but in the life to come. As we step into eternity, he's, mercy sets us free from sin 
that separates us from God eternally. Mm -hmm. Isaiah the prophet in 59.2, your sin separates you from God. You know, I'm convinced people really don't care about the mercy of God. Mm. I'm absolutely convinced of it. Because we live such deserving lives. Not only now, but in eternity. We live as if I deserve all these things. I deserve to have people be nice to me. I deserve to make lots of money. My first job I've ever gotten. I deserve to have all of this stuff. I deserve to have this house. And then we live that way, stepping into eternity, as if I deserve to go to heaven one day. Because they no longer care about sin. That's why they act that way. People don't care about sin anymore or its rewards. They have taken the word sin out of their vocabulary. And they replaced it with things such as a mistake. Oops. I messed up. I slipped. Oops. Well, once you do that, now you live in a world that whatever you do is okay. And nobody has the right to tell you when you did something wrong. That's the kind of world we're living in these days. And sad to say, that's the kind of world a lot of churches are living in these days. Mm -hmm. We let anybody do whatever they want. My brothers, there's a price to pay for sin, isn't there? Oh, yeah. There's a price to pay. And the payment for sin is called death. It's not just having a bad day. It's called death. The wages of sin is death. Which means death from sin is what we worked hard to get. <laughs> That's what a wage is. Huh? You go to, we, go to work on Monday, you get paid on Friday. You got your wages due for the work that you did. Death is the wage due for the sin that we commit. That's the payout for it. That's what we earn. That's what we deserve. And you want to talk about being entitled? Mm -hmm. That's what we're entitled to. Mm -hmm. Death, which is separation from God forever in a place called hell. Some people get upset when they hear this. And they say to me things like, well, but Father Steve, I'm not that bad. <laughs> you know, I'm not that bad. Well, what do you mean you're not that bad? Well, I haven't killed anybody. Yeah. Well, I ask him, did you ever commit adultery? Well, you know, yeah. Oops. <laughs> but that's not that bad. <laughs> hmm. Or they'll say things like, well, I've never coveted my neighbor or anything they have. And I go, well, did you push God aside on Sunday so you could go do something else mm -hmm. and forget about him? When people say, well, I'm not so bad, Father, I like to turn around sometimes and just say, well, I don't think you're that good either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in our heart, we can never do enough to cancel sin, can we? Mm -mm. We can't make right what we've already broken. And make us, we can't make us right with God and acceptable to Him by our own merits. If we could, what was the whole point of Jesus coming to die on the cross? Mm -hmm. And that's why mercy, that's why the mercy of God is so important to us, who sent His Son Jesus, His only mm -hmm. Son, to take on human flesh so He could die on a cross with our sin heaped upon himself, that we might be set free. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter, he himself bore our sin in his body on the cross. Why? So that we can die to sin and live to righteousness. Not so that we can keep on doing whatever we do and say, Jesus died on the cross, therefore I'm forgiven. No, it's so we can stop doing those things that offend God, offend our neighbor, and ultimately hurt ourselves. See, Jesus didn't die on the cross for the good one, did he? He died on the cross for the worst one. Because nobody is good. The Bible says there's none good, not even one. Christ came to save the lost from sin. 
Scripture says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. That's mercy, isn't it? That's God's grace. This, my brothers, is the mercy of God. Mercy that says you are on a course to hell by your own choosing, by your own liking, by your own choosing of unbelief and following me, but I still want to save you. Wow. That blows my mind when I think about it. By taking your place of suffering on the cross, Jesus says, I want to save you. So let me ask you a question. What did Jesus really save us from? What did he really save us from? When I ask that question, I, I, I get so many different answers. The number one answer that people say is, well, Jesus came to save me from sin. And the number two answer is, he came to save me from hell. Hmm. And some even go so far as to say, are you ready for this one? This one I really love. He says, he came to save me from poverty and sickness and from family curses. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. The thing Jesus came to save us from is spelled out in the scriptures if we simply read it carefully. And believe it. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. Remember it. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. The Apostle Paul says, Having been justified by his blood. Which means we're set free from our sin, right? Mm -hmm. Having been set free from his sin, Paul goes on to say, We are saved from the wrath of God through him. Mm -hmm. We deserve the wrath of God because of our sin. Jesus came to save us from the wrath of God. We're entitled to the wrath of God because of our sin. But in his mercy, we don't get what we really deserve, do we? We don't get what we really deserve. How many times have you guys said, and I know I've said it, how many times have you guys said, I didn't deserve that? I deserve better than that. I deserve to be treated better. I deserve to have more stuff. I deserve to go to heaven. Mm. No, we don't. We deserve one thing. We deserve the wrath of God. But Jesus saved us from that. To bring us to eternal life and live with God. Because he's merciful. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, let me ask you a question. Who does God love in that verse? The world. For God so loved the world. He loves everybody. He loves believers. He loves unbelievers. He loves us all the same. And he loves us all the same and more than we could ever know. So he offers the mercy of salvation to all people. It's offered to us equally. So that by faith, huh, Jesus continues to say, so that by faith, those who believe in him will have eternal life. People say to me all the time, well, if God is so merciful, why does he send people to hell? God doesn't send anybody to hell. We made a decision to make. We decided to go there on our own because we wouldn't believe in Christ. Because we wouldn't stop doing the things that go contrary to God. Because we wouldn't stop sinning if you would. Like a friend of mine once said, well, I don't consider it sin to do these things. I consider it to living imperfectly. <laughs> Whatever that means. I said to him, I said, well, Dennis, I guess you sin imperfectly then. Yes. <laughs> That's all I could come up with. In his divine mercy, God desires for everyone to be saved, doesn't he? So Peter says, God desires for all to be saved and to come to repentance. And he gave us the means by which salvation is possible. He gave us his son to die on the cross for the entire world. But yet we have to believe. We have to hear the message of the gospel. We have to believe in Christ. Put our faith and our hope in Him. 
for the salvation of our soul. And when we believe this mercy of God offered to all people becomes effectual in our lives. It becomes ours, if you would. Divine mercy, it's called, because it comes from the throne of God. Knowing this, knowing this could make us believers and should make us believers. The humblest people of all. More humble than anybody else. You know, there's no place for arrogance in the church, is there? No place for arrogance whatsoever. From the top of the priest, the bishop, the archbishop, everybody, deacons, monks, all the way down to the lay people. We should be the most humble people of all because we experience the mercy of God given to us through Christ. You know, we're called to follow the example of Jesus, aren't we, in our life. That's what we're called to do once we're saved. We're called to be his disciples. Well, what does being a disciple mean? It means to be just like the master, mm -hmm. just like the leader. In fact, Jesus teaches us in the scriptures how to be like him. He said a couple words in Matthew, the fourth chapter, when he called Peter and his brother Andrew to follow him. In fact, two words. He simply said, follow me. And what did they do? They got up mm -hmm. and they followed him. Only when we follow Jesus do we experience the mercy of God to its fullest. And then we can learn to be merciful to others. Ah. And that takes surrender on our part. It takes surrender to Christ not only as Savior, but it takes surrender to Christ also as Lord. So when we experience the mercy of God, we are to be merciful to others because God has been merciful to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord God for forgiving us. We thank you, Father, for loving us. We thank you for giving us your mercy when we don't deserve anything from you, Lord. We deserve nothing good, but you've given us everything that's even beyond the capacity to call it good. For you give us your Son, Jesus, our Lord, to set us free and save us. Deliver us to stay, O oh Lord, from our thoughts, from our actions, and help us each day turn to you, Lord, to experience your new mercies every day. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us together profess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed that we have in our worship sheet before us. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all ages, God of God, light of light. True God of true God, begotten, not created, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. and our intercessions this morning. Let us give honor and glory to the Lord Jesus, the Master of life and death. God raised him from the dead for our salvation, and Christ will raise us with his saving power. Let us praise the Lord with our morning prayers, and our response is praise and glory to you forever. You are the great high priest Praise and glory to you forever. You are the mediator of the new and perfect covenant. Praise and glory to you forever. You nourish us abundantly. Praise and glory to you forever. And you call us into your glorious presence. Praise and glory to you forever. As our praises ascend to the Lord, so too may our prayers for the church and for the peoples whom we love. Our response now is, Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. For a recreation of life in the hearts and minds of those seeking meaning and truth, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. For strength to be manifest in the lives of those whose doubts are strong, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. For your mercy to be shown in the midst of illness and suffering, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. For our openness to walk in the Spirit and so meet the needs of our world, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. And for a fresh spring of priestly and religious vocations to well up in the church, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. In the power of the Spirit, we also lift before you the needs and intentions that are close to our heart. Good morning, Papa. Thank you for being with us today. We have a lot of people and a lot of things to pray about. As is always the case, because this is a, a broken and bloody world. We are all born broken. Uh, sometimes it manifests itself in, in ways that are unpleasant. For example, um, well, a good example of that would be TJ. He comes from a broken home, and his, uh, our father, Steve, is his grandfather. And this is the place where he can get compassion, love, mercy, rest, um, a quiet place to stay, not being stressed at all. And we pray for our sister Mary and her children, Wesley, Cameron, and Natalie, that they may all come together at one time to be a whole family and not separate from each other and perhaps even angry at each other. It's just another manifestation of of human brokenness, that they're not together right this second. But we pray that you bring them together. And then for all of our brothers and sisters throughout the world, may you stand firm with each and every one of them, help them in their lives, love them, bless them, be merciful to them, show undeserved kindness as you always do, sometimes known as grace. Thank you for listening to this, Papa. Thanks for my brothers here today, O oh Lord, that you brought us together, Lord, as broken as we are, as undeserving as we can be. 
that you call us to come every Sunday on your mercy and grace. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for the bond of community, the bond of brotherhood, the bond of fellowship we have in Christ. It's a blessing, Lord. And so, Papa, we offer up this prayer of love and thanks, asking for all these things and for your love and for being with us today. In the name of your Son and our brother, the Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. In our concluding prayer this morning, each Sunday, O oh God, as we mark the weekly resemblance of the resurrection, we relive the wonders of your marvelous work of salvation and experience anew the power of Christ's Easter victory. By the grace of your Spirit, help us to recognize the Lord who comes into our assembly and stands among us. So as a community of believers, one in mind and heart, we may with great power Give our testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Spirit of God, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our God, King of the universe. You bring forth grain from the earth. May this gift of yours become for us our communion in the body of Christ. King of the universe, you bring forth the fruit of the vine. May this gift of yours become for us our communion in the blood of Christ. Blessed be God forever. Father, receive us as we come to this table and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble hearts and contrite minds. And me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt, and purify. 
sanctify me from my sin. And seal my lips, O Lord, that I may give you praise. Let us pray, my beloved brothers and sisters, that the sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is just and right father all-powerful and ever-living God at all times and in all places it is right to give thanks to you and praise you and yet we do so with greater joy than ever in this Easter season when Christ became our paschal sacrifice he is the true lamb offered for us, taking away the sins of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, in a universe echoing with Easter joy, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all your saints of every time and place who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your holy name. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father most holy, you are worthy of praise, for in Jesus your Son, you reveal the depth of your love through him. You have liberated us from our sla slavery to <coughs> sin and death and made of us a family where your boundless gifts are revealed. Invited by his love, we have gathered at this altar and we give you thanks for these gifts and for your creation, this bread and this wine. Sanctify them now by the power of your Holy Spirit that they may become for us the body of and the blood of your most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper had ended, he took a cup filled with wine. He gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Take this chalice, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this Eucharist. We enter more deeply into the saving work of your Son, the Good Shepherd who leads us along life-giving ways, the Lamb who takes away our sins, the Victor who lives and reigns forever at your side. At his intercession, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we might become a living sacrifice, wholly dedicated to your service. May the same Spirit make us one, one in faith, as together we profess 
and one with those who minister to your church, especially Todd, our Archbishop, Rob, our own Bishop, Bernard, our Abbot General, and one with those who sorrow, one with those who rejoice, one with the sick, the suffering, and the dying, and one with our departed brothers and sisters, whom we commend to you your perfect love. When we falter, Father, and our steps leave your path, bring us back to your ways with gentle compassion, so that at the last day, together with Mary, the mother of God, Joseph, her husband, and all the saints, we may take our place among your great cloud of witnesses, united with all for all eternity. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Through him, with him, in him, to you, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And now taught by our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all that is evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. <laughs> Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and through the Eucharist, grant us peace and unity of the kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to all who with faith receive. Lamb of God, you take you away the sins, sins of the world, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take you away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. By the will of the Father and through the working of the Spirit, your death, O Lord, has brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your commands and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord, for the body of Christ bring you to everlasting life. salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. May the blood of Christ bring me to the last day. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. 
blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Mm -hmm. Today, as we receive here in the chapel the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in a physical and spiritual way, my prayer is with those who can't be here with us today, receive him in your heart and in your mind and in your soul. May the Lord be with you. Let's come and receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Lord of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. receive with a pure heart the heavenly food which you have given and may the gift you have given us here on earth sustain us until the last <coughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father, you give your Son to us this day under the sacramental signs of bread and wine. As we go forth from this altar, may your Spirit strengthen our faith and kindle in us the fire of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the blessing of God, the Father Almighty, the blessing of Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Thank you guys for coming today. Thank you for such a beautiful song in your bill. That was fantastic. And thank you everybody that's watching via Facebook, YouTube, whatever you're looking at today. I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad God brought us here together once again to celebrate this Holy Mass as well as sharing Bible study with one another as we grow together in our faith. With that being said, this Mass has ended and now we go in peace. For love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.